First of all, before getting into this fight and my whole idea on how to present an underdog and the way it was done with this fight, I wanted to thank you all so much for the massive amounts of support and success on the other Record of Ragnarok videos. Thank you all so much for that. Also, if you are new to this channel, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and turn on the bell notifications. I'm trying to hit 100,000 subscribers before the end of the year. That would be a huge achievement. But without further ado, cue the intro. Now, Sasaki vs. Poseidon was a fight that I originally had ranked as the worst fight out of all of the ones we've had so far, not including Raiden vs. Shiva. Now, when I say worst, not that it's a bad fight, but if not, that it, I just didn't think it was as good as the others. Now, looking back on it, this is easily better than Thor vs. Lubu, and I'll kind of give my reasonings as to why I think it's better than what I originally had it but why also I kinda didn't like the fight as much as the others. First of all, I think the unpredictability within a fight going into it is massive. For instance, the first fight that we start off with Thor vs. Lubu, we really have no idea who's gonna win. Same with Adam vs. Zeus. I mean, there comes a certain point in the fight where you kinda get the feeling that Adam is gonna lose, but even then you still can't really tell. And with the Jack vs. Hercules, I genuinely had no idea who was going to win. Um, Sasaki vs Poseidon was in a little bit of a rough spot and let me explain why. First of all, when it comes to getting into a fight and analyzing it, especially when it comes to this tournament format which is Record of Ragnarok, the context really does matter. And for those of you that have read it so far, I think you kinda know where I'm going with this. The first fight goes 1-0 to the gods. Second fight, 2-0 to the gods. By the third fight, we kinda get the feeling, okay, humanity has to win one at this point. And if it wasn't obvious enough that humanity was gonna get a win at this third fight, they kinda really gave it away by having Sasaki be world's greatest loser. Like, I mean, it kinda gave off red flags to me instantly that, okay, he's the world's greatest loser, the irony of it's going to be that he's gonna win against Poseidon, who's this god of perfection who's never lost. It kind of gave it away for me instantly when the first two fighters were introduced, hence why the unpredictability of the fight for me felt the least impressive out of all of the others. But however, with that being said, it should have really hit me that despite its unpredictability being the worst out of all of the fights, and me kind of knowing the outcome before the fight even started, the fact that the fight was still extremely entertaining and captivating despite that is quite impressive. You see, writing an underdog character and making him compelling in that short amount of a time is very difficult. I mean, look at other series for instance like Naruto that have an entire series to flesh out an underdog story and make his triumph feel great. Record Ragnarok does not have that pleasure. They have to present Sasaki to you as a relatable and reasonable underdog, and then when he does triumph, it still feels phenomenal. Now, I see this being done two ways. First of all, the fight actually starts and, well, Sasaki kinda gets his butt whooped, but in an interesting way, as Sasaki kinda has this ability to predict the outcome of a fight based off of countless failures and experiences. So him mentally, he sees himself losing to Poseidon multiple times before even actually making the first move. Then you also have the fact that, well, his title is the world's greatest loser and he's going up against one of the most ruthless gods being Poseidon. And then on top of that, humanity is down to zero. They automatically set up Sasaki well to be an underdog and they make that message extremely clear. You see, because they didn't just give him the title World's Greatest Loser and then we have to accept that and then the fight happens and he just one-shots Poseidon. No, they actually make him an underdog within the fight and then again with the context of humanity being 2 0 down. Again, despite me thinking overall the context takes away from the unpredictability of the fight, I think the context adds to the character of Sasaki by really making him an overwhelming underdog. And that's one of the things that jumped out to me instantly rereading this fight is I wish this was applied with other characters who were deemed as quote unquote underdog. Because it's more than just being called an underdog, the actual context surrounding the character truly makes them an underdog, and the odds that they're facing as well just confirms, well, their position as a character. Now, the other thing that truly helps with this fight is Poseidon. Now, personally, the reason as to why we originally ranked this fight as the worst of all the four is because I personally feel as if Poseidon as a character truly didn't he didn't really stand out to me as much, like he was cool, and that was about it. I felt like Hercules did a better job of contrasting Jack, 
uh, than Poseidon contrasts Sasaki, but nonetheless, I think the contrast between Poseidon and Sasaki is decent enough. Thor versus Lubu were both outstanding characters to me, and well, I don't really need to say much about Adam versus Zeus. But I will give credit where credit is due, and Poseidon does contrast Sasaki pretty well. Again, not as good as I think Hercules contrasted Jack, but nonetheless good enough for it to be mentioned. Poseidon is this brutal god of perfection, who is kind of like... Even though Zeus is kind of the ultimate of all the gods in Record of Ragnarok, Poseidon is the embodiment of what a god should be like. Perfect, above humans, and his smug, arrogant attitude really does give that away. And so even though I wish there was more to Poseidon's character than just being a contrast for Sasaki, they wrote that aspect of the fight well enough uh, for it to work. Now as for the actual fight itself, this is where I'm a little bit torn, because even though it is unique in its own sense, and I love the way it kind of starts out with Sasaki kind of looking at his options and whatnot, and I love how the fight ends with Poseidon slowly losing his composure, I feel like the middle portion of that fight could have been way more dynamic, especially with a character like Poseidon who has the ability to control water. I mean, Adam vs. Zeus was a straight out brawler fight which was extremely entertaining from beginning to end, Thor vs. Luvu was a powerhouse of a fight, extremely entertaining from beginning to end, Jack vs. Hercules was a beautiful show of strategy, but when it came to this fight, the only thing really holding it is Sasaki's entire triumph from underdog to winner. Which is why I titled the Adam vs. Zeus fight how to write a fight, because I genuinely think from beginning to end it is a great demonstration of how you should write combat other than Goku vs. Frieza, and I saw a few comments dissing me and calling me a normie for bringing up Goku vs. Frieza, but look man, you can say whatever you want about Dragon Ball, but you cannot deny when it comes to fights, you can't diss Dragon Ball Z, especially early Dragon Ball Z. The way they wrote their fights and the way that they structured them and layered them out and gave context to the characters, you just, come on now. But with that being said, again, when it comes to this fight as Sasaki vs Poseidon, I'm titling this video How to Write an Underdog because that's truly all this fight really has. Um, up until we really get to see Poseidon lose his composure and become a lot more careless and reckless, and you can see kind of the insanity within his eyes, um, this is really just a Sasaki carried fight. It doesn't necessarily have the thematic strength that I think Jack vs. Hercules has, where it's kind of good versus evil, but I still get the overall message and themes that you can see between Poseidon and Sasaki. You have humility versus pride, uh, the mentality of a winner versus someone who has never won in their life. And so you can kind of see the different approaches and whatnot. And then the more you go into their backstories, again, Poseidon seeming cool, but it not strong enough to really carry him as a character. He just comes off as a jerk and we get that from the beginning. And then with Sasaki's backstory, we get a little more of the sense of just how much more of an underdog he really is. And I know I'm gonna get a little bit annoying, keep coming back to this, but again, when you have such little time to really present a character, the context is massive. Just before this, we had Adam, the first man ever, the trump card that was gonna be used for humanity. He didn't work, so now we have to turn to the world's greatest loser. We go from arguably the strongest human ever, or at least the most powerful because, I mean, Adam was going wild and ham against Zeus. The first human ever versus the world's greatest loser. I mean, talk about going from one option to another. But from then on, we then go to the final stage of the fight where Poseidon becomes a little more brutal and again begins to lose his composure and Sasaki starts gaining the upper hand. The fight gets pretty close to the end and it becomes a fight of brutal slashes and cuts, a sword versus a trident. And then we finally reach the conclusion where for the first time, humanity has made a god fall. And by the way, I will say, despite all of the issues I had with Poseidon as a character, and the fight itself not being extremely dynamic, the conclusion of this fight is easily just as good as the Jack vs Hercules or the Adam vs Zeus conclusion. It left you with a huge emotional impact and a desire for the next fight. Like I said near the beginning of the video, despite the unpredictability of the fight and the outcome kind of being easy to predict from the beginning, it was still emotional enough to leave me satisfied. Uh, I really did like Sasaki as a character after rereading this fight, and despite me still thinking that this fight is only now just the third best out of all of the ones we've had, Sasaki as a character is easily one of the best we've had so far in Record of Ragnarok. And so even though this isn't the Sasaki versus uh, Musashi fight that we've been waiting for in Vagabond for the past few years, this fight was still great. And so let me know if you enjoyed this video and if you'd like to see me cover maybe Thor vs Lubu or give my opinions on Shiva vs Raiden at the current moment. Let me know again in the comment section below. And again, also, if you are new to the channel, make sure you like, 
subscribe, turn on the bell notifications, and as always, this has been The Masked Man. Hope everyone has a blessed rest of the day, and peace.